Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsfarry.com. Today we are going to discuss about vaccine life cycle, an amazing life cycle in the biological world. And this is an attempt to simplify that life cycle. So starting with the description about the fungus, Vaccinia graminis is an obligate parasite or a strict parasite that belongs to the class Basidiomyces and is a heteraceous fungus. Heteraceous fungus means it requires two hosts to complete the life cycle and the primary host is a wheat and the secondary host is the barberry. Step 1 of the life cycle, dicaryotic acidiospore germination in wheat. So acidiospores are specialized spores that is formed on the lower side of the barberry leaf and this is a structure which is called as acidium on which acidiospores are formed you can see there are two nucleus that is without fusion that condition is called as dicaryotic so acidiospores are dicaryotic so this spores cannot infect barberry therefore it should travel towards a wheat field that is transferred by wind and ultimately reaching a wheat field it infects a leaf and forms extensive dicaryotic hyphae and the second stage is the formation of a specialized structure which is called as erudosaurus on which specialized spores are formed that is called as erudospore. These erudospores are red in color therefore the stage is called as red rust stage in wheat and also called as summer stage because of the summer season. The infection, the season of infection is during summer. These erudospores are formed in numerous numbers and that is released by the rupturing of epidermis and that is that infects other wheat plants in the field and also transferred to the neighboring wheat field causing secondary infection. So urodospores are involved in causing secondary infection of vaccinia. So these spores are stocked that is binucleate oval shaped with a spiny wall. At a later stage, with a change in season to winter, this urodospose cannot survive. On the urodosaurus itself, there arise another type of spore which is called as telutospore, which is stocked, bicelled and binucleate thick walled spore, which is called as a black rust stage because of the black color of the spore. Later, telutospores are formed on specialized structure which is called as Teleosaurus, just like Eurodosaurus. Then at the end of the growing season, there is a dormant stage. This Teletospos can survive in unfavorable condition. The two nuclei in each cell fuses or karyogamy occurs, forming a diploid nuclei. Next stage is the two nuclei, two haploid nuclei in each cell of the Teletospore fuses to form a diploid nuclei. This diploid nuclei undergoes meiosis forming four haploid nuclei and then from each cell there comes a promycelium and this four nuclei is moved into this promycelium. Later cross wall forms and finally forming four pesidiospores on a structure called sterigma of which two belongs to the plus strain and two belongs to the minus strain. Simply the diploid nuclei in each cell of teletospores undergoes meiosis forming four haploid nucleus which later transforms into four basidiospores of which two belongs to plus strain and two belongs to minus strain. So now we have basidiospores, two plus strain and minus strain. This basidiospores cannot infect wheat again. It should travel towards barberry. It, it is transferred by wind towards barberry then only it can cause further infection. Once it reaches the barberry leaf, basidiospore germinate in barberry leaf forming extensive structures called pycnia, pycniospores and receptive hyphae. This plus strain and minus strain that germinates on the upper surface of the barberry leaf forming an elaborate structure forming here starts the haplophase in the life cycle. So let us zoom in this region. On germination of basidiospore, an extensive haploid mycelium is formed. And this haploid mycelium later forms a structure which is called as pycnia. This flask type structure is called as pycnia. Pycnia has two specialized hyphae. One is called a spermatia 4 on which spermatia is formed just like a spore. Then there is a receptive hyphae. You can see the receptive hyphae that receives this spermatia. Now we have two strains, plus strain, 
plus deciduous pores and minus deciduous pores. Spermatia of plus strain is transferred to the receptive hyphae of minus strain by insects. So you can see this uh, spermatia that comes in contact with the receptive hyphae. Then the point of contact dissolves. Now this cell is having two nuclei without fusion and this undergoes further division forming an extensive network towards downward of the barberry leaf. This dicaryotic hyphae later forms a cup shaped structure which is called as ACDM. What is actually happening is step 4 pycnospores plus strain comes in contact with receptive hyphae of minus strain plus strain and minus strain dicaryotic hyphae on upper side of the leaf. This hyphae forms dicaryotic acidiospore on acidial cup on the lower side of the hyphae. This is the acidial cup. You can see the acidial spore and this spore is also dicaryotic. Thus acidiospores are formed. This spores cannot infect Barbary again thus completing the life cycle in Barbary. This acidiospores should treat a wheat leaf for further infection. Thus once again starts the life cycle by the germination of dicaryotic acidiospore in wheat. And this is one of the most absolutely amazing life cycle that is happening in the fungus called Paxinia graminis. So let's have a quick summary of this life cycle. Stage 1 in wheat, acidiospore germinates on wheat. Later, dicaryotic hyphae form uridia bearing uridiospores. In wheat, seasonal changes triggers the formation of telutospores on telutosaurus in the place of uridosaurus. Stage 3 in wheat, telutospores produce promycelia. The diploid nuclei in each cell of the telutospore later transforms into pesidiospores that is formed on pesidium. Stage 4 is in barbaria that is haplophase. Pesidiospores germinate forming extensive hyphae with spermagonia or pycnia bearing spermatia and receptive hyphae later nuclei of opposite strain remain in a common protoplasm without fusion forming a dicarion. Then there will be extensive mitotic division ultimately forming an extensive elaborate acidial cup on the lower side of the barberry leaf and this acidia bearing acidiospores are formed on the lower side of the barberry leaf. This acidiospores cannot infect wheat again therefore it is disseminated by wind to a wheat field for further infection. In short, haplophase is happening in barberry and dicaryotic phase is occurring in wheat. Hope the life cycle is clear. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.